Hi everyone, Judy here. Kumusta mo mga higala? In this video, we are going to talk about Filipino family culture. So this will be a mini-series that I'll be talking about Filipino culture. So this video is all about family, Filipino family. Before we start guys, I have to say my own disclaimer. Okay, this video doesn't apply to the whole Filipino family community. Some of these might not be applicable to some Filipino families. So I am talking about general terms here. What we're going to talk about is also based on my experience, our family um, experience and background. Again, this might not apply to all Filipino families around the world. Okay, so I'll be talking about general terms and some of my observation as a Filipino. Okay, now let's start. Number one, we have a close-knit family. Okay, we are very close to one another, like sometimes literally. A lot of Filipinos, especially those who are in low-income families, some of them, some of us, sleep in one room like all together five members of the families or even more in just one small space okay that's how close we are but for those filipinos who are in the who are average or middle income earners or the rich one a lot of us has their own rooms and are living in a more comfortable accommodation not all filipinos have their own rooms two we are co-sleeping okay you know when we start making families we don't put our babies in another room most of us filipinos co-sleeping because it is much practical and logical you're basically near to your to your baby so anything the baby needs uh milk if you are breastfeeding the baby, you just have to lift your shirt and then the baby can suck to your breast. And if, or you prepare the milk in just the same room. The more you'll get tired taking care of the babies because you keep moving back and forth in one room to another room. Okay, so, and it's also for security reason in a sense that when the baby cries, you can, you can immediately attend to the baby. Okay, I think that's also one of the reasons why we are so very close to one another because from the infancy until the kids are big, we are just in one room. So another reason why they sleep with me because of the aircon usage. Instead of putting aircon in their respective rooms, everybody will sleep in one room so that we will only turn on one aircon. So that's one of the reasons as well. It's more economical. Another culture of the Filipinos, we go to church together every Sunday. It is our obligation to go to church. Although some Filipinos doesn't follow this, but most of the Filipino families goes, go to church every Sunday or maybe Saturday, depending on the uh, religion. After going to church, a lot of Filipino families go to mall to have lunch or to have dinner. And after that, recreational activities after that. Birthdays okay birthdays we all gather during birthdays giving gifts is not required but it is appreciated if you give gifts here in the philippines if it's your birthday you are going to take charge of the party okay during birthdays if one of the member is absent or cannot come maybe because the family member is an ofw or working abroad or still in or still working and cannot attend to the birthday party uh, most fam Filipino families will call via zoom or Skype or messenger so that that member who is absent can at least uh, experience and witness the birthday celebration so that is also a common thing video call during birthday celebration you can see that it's very common here in the Philippines now during courtship the family is already involved, okay? Whether you like it or not, family is always involved in every step of the way. Now, 
generally speaking, um, our culture here, the guy has to go to the woman's house to court her. This is also one way of showing that the guy is very serious with the girl. If the parents like the guy or not, it is, you know, it's not always have a positive outcome. Some parents will, will say that they don't like the guy, don't say yes to this guy and all. At some point, it is okay with us to, you know, you can court us outside and not meet the family yet but once things get serious we expect the man to go to the to our house or to meet my family um, just to give us an assurance that you are really i mean the guy is really serious about us because um i mean you can see from that point if the guy doesn't want to meet any of your family members or, that means he might not be really serious about you and about the lady in filipino culture the guy has to meet the parents to prove his love and if he is really serious about the relationship so ladies don't forget about this culture if you're not following this one okay if he doesn't want to go to your house there must be something fishy about it okay so given this kind of culture the parents or the family members if 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 those couple doesn't end up together, it's okay. We usually carry the surname of our father. But now, there is a new... Actually, it's, I think it is not new. It's been there for so long, but only very few people who knows this uh, law that actually the women has the option not to use the surname of the husband and now it, i mean the children can use the surname of their mothers okay so just so you know <laughs> so this is very common um this saying the saying goes that you're not marrying the family you're just marrying the person that you love in the filipino culture sometimes this the, this does not apply especially especially if you guys are not financially stable normally the culture is once you get married you will stay with your husband's family or if one of the couple has a property already then they don't have um, they don't have to live with their parents okay that's a the perfect i would say that's a perfect um, situation but a lot of filipinos when they get married they will live with their parents so in one household it is very common here in the philippines to see three generations living in one house and it is not something to be frowned upon it is part of our culture isolating a filipino from his or from her family is like a torture <laughs> next one let's talk about privacy privacy in filipino homes it's a big challenge especially if you are staying in one in just one room how can you have privacy when everybody's staying in just one room the husband and the wife has to find ways creative ways in how to have their private moments but even then even if, even then we are co-sleeping guys our population is still rising so i think filipinos are so creative in finding private moments okay so even if we are co-sleeping, even if we are living in one small house, we still have the time and ways on how to have our own private moments, okay? We are used to being with our siblings. We are used to being with our parents around. So it is not so a big issue having privacy. We find ways to have our own uh, privacy. Um, it could be just being alone in one corner or just being alone in the toilet now once families relatives are gathered together the noise is like you are in a market one end talking to the other end and then this one here talking to this this one is talking to this and then one here is answering to the conversation of of these two here so it's like we are in a market and it's 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 a happy situation for all of us and even if we're too noisy we understand each other <laughs> okay so that that is 
um, that's one of the Filipino, Filipino culture that I really love when everybody's, you know, having fun in one table. Affectionate. Uh, most Filipinos are, are affectionate. We are not scared to show our affection. Um, parents likes to say, I love you, I care for you to the children, and then vice versa. We hug, we hold hands, we kiss, uh, we do beso beso, you know, cheeks to cheeks, and then we also have blessed gesture as a sign of respect, and that is expected um, to all Filipino children to do the blessing, uh, you know, to do the blessed gesture. When parents keep telling you, be careful when you go there, it is actually a sign of being, we are just being caring about you. Outside there, you don't know what will happen to you. That's why parent, parents and families and friends will say, oh, be careful when you go out because we don't know what will happen to you when, while you're outside. It's not, it's not that we know something will happen to you, something bad will happen to you, but it's just one way not telling you that don't lower your guard. So it's a one way for us to, that, to show that we care about you. Mistakes. We forgive, we, we easily forgive, but we don't forget. So some Filipinos will keep on talking about their mistakes, but some Filipinos doesn't. So it depends on the person. You cannot move forward if you don't forgive. Okay, so for Filipinos, we easily forgive. When you have mistakes, for light mistakes, you know, it's okay. And it's easy for us to say, um, you're not a, humans are not perfect. It's okay to commit mistake. It's okay because mistakes will teach you more. Okay? Mistakes is so easy to teach you than just telling you that it's wrong. Don't do that. Don't do this. Okay, now let's talk about the old folks, the senior citizens. We call them senior citizens here in the Philippines. In Cebu, by the way, once you turn 60, you must apply the senior citizen card. Now, the senior citizen card is very useful, guys. If you have the senior citizen, you can. You don't need to line up for too long in the grocery stores. There is a specific aisle, a specific cashier for those um, senior citizens. And then um, they are given priority, okay? Then once you have that senior citizen card, you will have 20% off from your meals, from your, and then the cinema. I'm really sorry about the noise, guys. And then from the cinema, I think there are days that are open for senior citizens, so you can watch movies on a specific day only. Okay? Normally, um, our old folks, children, are expected to take care of the old folks. We don't put our old we normally normally we are the one who takes care of the old folks very few filipinos who put their old folks their um in their old folks in a home for the aged so some doesn't have any choice but anyway guys it is very common to hear this in the morning somebody selling selling puto okay puto is like uh, sticky rice so they go house to house. You can buy that if you don't have, if you don't want to cook for breakfast. You can have puto in the morning plus the hot choco, local hot choco. Okay, so that is very common here uh, in the Philippines. They will just shout and sell you something. They will shout fruits, whatever, whatever like balot, puto, ngoyo, what, or chicharon. You know the local delicacies. They do that house to house here. Now about the old folks. Yes, we take care of our senior citizens until they, until they die, okay? Okay, now, sometimes this is a source of fights among children of who will take care of the parents, the old parents, okay? But not all Filipinos does this, okay? It's just that it is one of the source of fights among siblings, now, it is very common here in the Philippines to see that the eldest sibling as the breadwinner. This one, it depends with the situation. Some families are not earning much, so those eldest sibling needs to work 
to help pay the bills. I know sometimes it is hard for the breadwinner, but um, I know deep in their hearts, they are actually very happy because they know they were able to help the family. Okay, sometimes it's not just, sometimes this can be also a, has also a bad side. The breadwinner will come to a point where she or she can be so tired, doesn't feel appreciated anymore. I mean, everybody's depending too much of this breadwinner. Ideally, everybody must help. Okay, ideally, everybody must help, not just, you know, becoming a parasite and just a freeloader. Okay, so there are families who who are in that situation there are families also are, who are very successful uh, who are very successful in managing um, this kind of situation when the parents are not earning much or when the parents get sick and then the eldest sibling has to work respect for elders okay guys we are expected so children are not allowed to raise their voices when they talk to their parents, to the old folks, to anyone who is older than them. That's why in my lessons, since you want lessons, you must watch the tone of your voice. If you want to reason out, reason out properly and, you know, to, the, to a point where um, not disrespecting your parents, okay? Answering back must be done in must be done in a way not to offend the elders okay so you must be watchful of your tone of voice because if you raise your voice they will tell you you're so bastos you're so rude you don't want people to tag you as bastos or rude okay or someone who has no manners we have to uphold the the honor of the family intact so because or else you'll be Pakaulaw, that means, you know, it's a shame. It's a, you know, it's a shame act like that. And then we don't want to tag our family as bastos because, you know, other families will treat you not so nicely as well. <laughs> and then never say any bad words to the old folks, to your parents, and to someone who is older than you as a sign of respect. Never do that. It's like... It's very, very rude and it is frowned upon because you'll be tagged as disrespectful and you don't have any ulao or you, they will say, Paka ulao lang ka. I mean like that. So you mean you're such a shame. The mothers, Filipina mothers, okay, the mothers, they have a lot to say in the house. Normally, if you are living with your in-laws, the queen of the house, the original queen of the house, manage everything. And he, she has a lot of things to say to you, to anyone. She is actually the, <laughs> shall I say, the CEO, okay? She rules the house, okay? So if you're, that's why it's very good if you're living together with your in-laws. It is very good to have a good relationship with your in-laws. Because again, it can make or break your, you know, your marriage. It can make or break your relationship with your partner. So... And then there should be more communication to avoid this kind of um, friction with the in-laws, okay? If you cannot have a good relationship with them, the best thing to do is to separate from them. I know it is hard to separate because it entails a lot of money, but for peace of mind, I think it's really good to move away from your parents. Uh, you must separate because two queens in the house is not a good idea <laughs> okay if you have good relationship with uh, your in-laws that's really fine i mean you can be happy if even if you are staying with them so me luckily i have good relationship with my in-laws so which is making life smoother and easier so I cannot imagine if I keep fighting with my in-laws. So it's like a very big stress for me personally if I, have, if I don't have any good relationship with my in-laws. Kids have duties and responsibilities. So we are expected to behave properly because again, we have the honor to uphold. <laughs> when the kids are already working, okay, they are it's like we are expected to 
uh, to support the family okay to give money to the parents to help pay the bills it is like that um, again it comes from the bayanihan spirit that we have to help each other so if the family is not good in handling money this can be a source of problem as well and source of fights among each other in the family and that is not good when my my dad lost his job and luckily I was working already at the time so all my salary I have to give it to my mom then she will just give me a, an allowance I did not feel bad at the time because I am helping my family and then it is a Filipino culture that we help each other Filipinos usually have big families like the aunts and aunties, the immediate aunts and aunties, and then the second degree aunts and aunties, third degree aunts and aunties, and so on and so forth. Even if that person is not a relative, we still call them kuya or ate, tito or tita. Okay? Anybody that is close to us or being friends with us, that um, we call them ate, kuya, or we call them by names if we are the same age, but if it, they are older than us, we call them ate or kuya, tito, tita, lolo, lola, even if, if they are not our grandparents, like there's no connection. If it, even if it's a stranger, we call them lolo, lola, like that, or kuya or ate. Usually the elders in the house, the opinions of the elders are given more importance than the young ones. Okay, so some some old folks or parents will listen to the suggestions of the kids um, it depends on the situation actually in filipino families we have so many ofw families and we are one of that and to be an ofw family it's not easy because you know of course you are doing a long distance relationship to be loyal to stay loyal with your partner is also a big challenge. Some of W have one year contract and they can come home after one year. So during those times, and it is very hard to stay loyal with your partner, to find a partner that will stay loyal to you and to be honest with you and to help you with your goals and finances, to help you with your um, future plans, it's really a big challenge. So there are broken families because they're their, their partner is not around during those times when they needed them so it is a very big challenge for us Filipino families OFW families to you know to stay to stay intact and loyal with one another so for those OFWs they are um, expected to bring in some money so that's why OFW remittances is very big is actually helping the economy normally the OFW will send money to the guardians who are taking care of their kids or to the wife or taking care of the kids and family who will work is it the mom or the dad actually it depends on the situation um, in generally speaking it's the dad is the is the dad or the husband who will work and then the wife will have to stay in the house to take care of the baby or to take care of the kids i think there's more stress given more pressure given to the wives and to the women because we are expected to take care of the kids the house manage everything to do budgeting while the husband is you know working and then we have to discipline the kids all of that it's actually adding you know it's it has put a lot of pressure on our shoulders because we are expected to do good in this in these areas the, the dad are expected to work and bring in money while the rest is the job of the woman so i think the stress of the dad is how to make money while the pet but the woman here have all the stress on how to budget the money on how to nurture the children attending to the in-laws um, taking care of the kids school um, teaching the kids and all but you know it depends it depends but i think generally speaking um if you're a woman here in the philippines you have more pressure and than you know than the guys that's just my personal i would say personal experience Mm -hmm. because once you get married 
um, being a wife you have very less freedom <laughs> to do all the things that you want to do while your husband can just you know go for work and he can he can actually just go out and be with his friends so, you know we, we badly need a very supportive husband to you know help survive in motherhood so i think it puts more pressure on the women here in the philippines than maybe in other countries uh, again just this is just my general observation guys and based on experience you can also see a lot of women in the workforce who are entrepreneurs who are leaders as well so it is really good if you can find a partner who can be with you with in all of these challenges it's difficult if you don't have a good partner okay i hope i was able to give you what filipino family culture is like okay so that you don't have much culture shock if you're a foreigner and if you are a filipino watching my video please also comment what are your thoughts about this video so i'm again again guys disclaimer this is i'm talking about general term and general terms and experiences my experiences and some of these are my observation that's all i can share about filipino families if i forgot something just leave it down in the comments below i hope you learned something about our culture and may this video be a guide in if you're having a hard time understanding filipino families okay that's all for today dagang salamat mga higala Amping kanunay. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel and Instagram, please subscribe. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!